Uh, uh, ben, to my mind, is one of the most interesting uh, actors working in movies these days. My former colleague, uh, Matt Zoller Seitz, once described you as one of the actors who can make a bad film worth watching. That presumes that you've, <laughs> <laughs> that presumes that you've been in bad films, though. I don't, Never. I, I, <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Uh, ben Foster, welcome. Thanks, Bob. To, to Salon. Uh, your, your, your new your new film, The Reason That We're Here, which comes out June 29th uh, this week as we speak, Leave No Trace, directed by Deborah Granick. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about Leave No Trace. What's this movie about? Uh, th this movie follows a uh, a vet uh, who who has uh, uh, been living in a national forest a park uh, with his daughter. It's in Oregon, right? Yeah, yeah. in the Pacific Northwest, right outside of Portland. It's based on a true story. Uh, mm -hmm. And the reverse narrative is that uh, they get caught, uh, and uh, society doesn't agree with people who don't want to live in a house. So they give them a house, and really it's, it's about how society uh, influences their relationship and starts pulling them apart. And, uh, you know, I, it's funny, I think of you still as, uh, because I, I've been seeing you in movies for quite a few years, I think of you as this exciting young actor who's new on the scene, and here you are. Broken. Enough, broken and old. <laughs> old enough to play somebody's dad. <laughs> <laughs> a conscious person's dad. Yeah. It happens. Um, <laughs> Time is wicked. What, 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 about, what about this role? Uh, those of you who don't know the director of this film, Deborah Granick, she made a, a film that had a certain influence on movie history called Winter's Bone and a number of years ago, which introduced a young actress named Jennifer Lawrence, but was also just a really compelling film mm. on its own terms. What, what drew you to, was it the, the character? Was it working with Deborah? The script, what was the, what was the combination that made you interested in this one? It was her, it was, uh, her first film, uh, Down to the Bone. Yes. Which, which knocked me out. Yeah. And that was with Vera Farmiga, and, and she's just... I forgot about that one. That's terrific, yeah. And they made it on a shoestring budget, and it, it, that, that's about addiction, and, and it's just a wonderful, a wonderful film. Um, and I'd seen her documentary, I think it's called Stray Dog. I always mess that up. Um, but it follows a vet um, as well. Uh, when I heard she was doing this film, uh, I was just excited because she doesn't make them very often. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. like five to eight years in between yeah. each one. So when I read this script, I just gotten word that, that that my wife was pregnant. Oh wow! And I finished the script and just burst into tears. I was like, I, I get this is this is this is uh, I got I gotta ask this lady if she'll take a walk with me so I can convince her to give me the job. Wow. Uh, yeah, what a, what a way to enter the world of parenthood, playing this particular parent, right? It was interesting. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, uh, we don't want to give too much away to people who are going to see the, the movie. And believe me, it's really, really compelling, really compassionate, really worth seeing, really puts you into the world of these people. But <clears throat> this guy, he's 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 complicated character. Um you know, I could say sort of generally sympathetic, but not always making the right decisions, mm. uh, not always doing the things that are, you know, the most orthodox, the most defensive. Well, how did you think about him when, when you approached playing this guy? Uh, I mean, our job is to defend the people sure, we're playing. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, it's a good way of putting it, actually. I, I agree with a lot of what he's saying, and, and <laughs> I agree. I, I, there's half of me that says yes. Mm -hmm. His uh, his way uh, of dealing with trauma, um, and it's only suggested uh, uh, of what he experienced in war, uh, has left uh, unseen scars. And the way that he negotiates that is by removing he and his daughter from society, uh, right. less triggers. But also the philosophy being is it a want or a need and what do we actually need in life to live a a, a life that's fulfilling and that's these are questions that I I'm asking as a parent as a as a man every day yeah this, this is not the kind of movie um, Deborah Granick does not make the kind of big budget movie where we're gonna have some elaborate flashback to Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever that that fills in the story this is a this is the kind of thing where your character and the amazing, let, let's talk about that for a second, this amazing yeah. young woman who plays yeah. your daughter, she's kind of a discovery, do you think so? Completely, yeah. And yeah, Thomason is just terrific, yeah, wonderful actor. And uh, what, did, you guys, did you guys connect right away? Did you have to work together before the movie started? We, uh, 
our rehearsal process wasn't a traditional one, uh, and, 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 and that was very appealing, which was uh, kind of my, I guess, the, the way I like to work is go learn the thing, yeah. and then you go do the thing. Uh, and this thing was go learn the nature thing. So we, were, we, we spent time with a survivalist trainer and, 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 and uh, primitive skills uh, along with someone that I worked privately with who, who would teach uh, escape and evade techniques to uh, special ops guys. Right, right, right. So w by learning these skills, um, I asked to go in early in order to be able to teach Tom a few things, just, mm -hmm. to, just to create a dynamic. Um, just spend time out in the woods together, uh, making a fire, uh, yeah. co collecting sticks for a shelter, just basic tasks. And that created a, a really beautiful shorthand. Um, but she's hard not to connect with. She's, she's a, just, you see it on screen. What were the important, the, the important elements for the character about learning? What did you have to learn about living in the woods that maybe you didn't know before? A lot, uh, a lot. It, it's because uh, these people are pretty much off the grid, right? It's, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 the joy of the job is similar to being a journalist. You, you get to say, "How is that? Why is that? Well, right. What is right. that about? And how how do you do that?" And uh, oh, I worked with someone named uh, Doctor Nicole Apollian for 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 these tribal skills and or primitive skills rather. And it, 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 nature becomes legible. You go out into the, the forest That's and cool. rather than it was just trees, you're saying, yeah. oh, that could be a shelter. That could be a rain encatchment. That, yeah. this is a, that's edible. And you start seeing resources in your surroundings where before it was just green and brown. It was, it was very, very exciting. Um, and everything that we did in the film is uh, I would do practically. So it just makes my job easier if I right. can do the thing. Right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm struck by the fact that they don't consider themselves to be homeless, right? Because one of the shorthand <laughs> ways that you could present this movie is that these two people are are homeless and living in, you know, a state park or whatever it is. But that's not how they conceive of this. This mm -hmm. is this is not the anything close to the stereotypical like ho homeless person thing, right? Yeah, they have a home. Yeah, and and they have each other. And uh, and sometimes uh, it's hard for parents to let go of their kids. Very hard, yeah. yeah. How, how do you think about this issue personally? Because there's this, this collision between what they want and what society says is okay. Mm. You know, the rule is that you can't, that they, uh, essentially the rule that they run afoul of is you can't just go live in a state park. Um, and is that too much social control? I mean, you were saying your job is to defend the character. Mm. Um, how do you feel about that if you see, if you see somebody living that way? Well, I, I I responded to to his philosophy. Uh, society offers up a, a a real healthy dose of a uh, of toxic nonsense every day, and it, and 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 as a, a new parent, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm I'm me and my wife are going to be negotiating these waters of how do we protect our child and, and give them the most enriched mm -hmm. life they could have. Uh, so, this was an interesting statistic that I read today. It said 25%, uh, I think it was North Americans spend, uh, or most North Americans spend 25% of their day looking at their smartphone or a tablet. I'm almost surprised it's that low, but it's still, it still looks scary. It's yeah. scary. So yeah. that's four hours a day, yeah. roughly. Yeah. They were, when, when did phones come about, would you say, the smartphone, 10, 15 yeah, years? Yeah, even just about 10 years ago, yeah. So, yeah. so if we look at that statistic, and we look at that time frame, and then we look at the, the soaring heights of anxiety and depression that are going on with our children, it coincides with this thing, this, this, this machine. So I'm thinking, like, well, if, you, if, that's what's, if that's what it's doing, and we don't know how to negotiate these dopamine hits, what if we take some of those things out? What if we return to something natural? I find that very appealing. It, it may be extreme, certainly, for, for my own way I want to live my life, but uh, some of Will's philosophies are very, uh, there's an appeal right now that I think people will connect with. Right, right, I think that's true. 
Did you do any specific research in terms of either the, you, you talk a little bit about the, the kind of military component, but in terms of talking to vets or talking to people who have lived in some really unorthodox mm -hmm. situation like this, did you do anything like that specifically? Uh, over, the, over the years, uh, I've become friends with, with, with men and women who have served and, and returned and, and, and struggled with reentry. Uh, so we, Deborah and I both have accumulated, um, I guess, stories, narratives, personal experiences with our friends that they share with us, and felt pretty natural to, uh, felt pretty connected to this guy pretty uh, fairly quickly. The the biggest door in was was a line in the script, which is a, is it a want or is it a need? That was the line. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And. It, and you read the script a hundred times. You just—it's like developing a photo. You just you yeah. just keep putting a wash on it, and, and and patterns will come up. And when I saw in that line, I brought back to Deborah. I said, "Well, let's let's do a pass of the script through that lens. And if and, and the game is this: mm -hmm. if if he doesn't need to say it, no, he doesn't say it. So she was game. So we just redlined the script. And we're like, he doesn't actually need to. And you wound up cutting out a fair amount of stuff that fair way. Amount. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And that was the that was the fun. Like, what yeah. can we get away with and still transmit, still communicate uh, through behavior and context uh, who this man is and where he came from? And that was exciting. What, he, what he's been through, yeah. yeah. Right. So what, I think what I was about to say earlier was that this isn't the kind of movie where you're going to get that, the, the, the backstory that has explosions and, you know, his friend getting killed in Afghanistan or whatever. You know, you know we could make something up. Yeah, the third act monologue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't have that here. <laughs> so that's something that you guys had to basically provide without explicitly providing it, right? Yeah. En enough sense of what the context for this person's life is. That's the, that's the joy of it, just strip it. it the, the same way that he um, that he approaches belongings, Yeah, we wanted to do it linguistically, just whatever is essential, uh, and see what we get away with. Well, and one of, the, one of the things about Deborah Granick's movies, including the two, two that we talked about earlier, is the sense of place is always so strong. Mm. Um, was there a way, a way in which those Woods, the kind of very, the very specific, gorgeous, damp, sometimes bone chilling, mm. you know, forests of the Pacific Northwest. Did that shape how the how you guys played the roles? Do you think? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you're on a beach, you, you feel a particular way. Uh, if you're in the forest, you feel a particular way. Uh, but I, I return to the idea that as children. Uh, We'd go play in a backyard or in the street. We'd, yeah. we'd just imagine wherever we were is where we were, and cultivating that that that, that what if scenario um, is is our job. It really helps when you're in the actual place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you haven't I, you've you've made movies at different levels of budget and all that for sure, but it, it seems like you have made something of a choice to stay out of certain kinds of, you know giant budget, you know, green stream spectacle movies where the challenge for acting must be very different if you're just in a room, basically. Yeah, it, it, it's more akin to, to playing in the backyard. Yeah. Except the, 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 the stick that you found is actually made by a big company. It's a very expensive <laughs> stick. Uh, and yeah. those green screens are, uh, yeah. I like all, I like different kinds of movies. Uh, uh, you know, we start off as fans first. And yeah. Uh, the filmmakers that I've been able to work with have worked at all, you know, different budgets. But yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't really think too hard about it. Uh, and it's freelance, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I guess I guess I guess you're a freelance employee. Yeah. Completely. Every few months, I, I'm looking for another job. So <laughs> you're part of the gig economy, in other words. A thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think of it more like catering. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you cook it well, up, mm -hmm. uh, you build, you collaborate, and then right. and you serve it up to per the menu that was asked for, and 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 it, you put your thing on it, and you hope people enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, next one. I, I, I'm interested in in the uh, you, you talked to, about getting to know people who've served in the military. Yeah, and you've played uh, either active duty uh, military pers people or vets a number of times. Mm. Uh, I really didn't. I probably was aware of that, but hadn't consciously thought about it. I mean, there's, um, uh, I guess, the, you know, The Messenger, isn't that what that movie's called? You and yeah. Woody Har Harrelson made. With Orin, Real, Orin with, Overman. With, with Orin, yeah. yeah. That really hit me hard, that particular one. 
or you guys are going around telling people that their loved one just got killed mm -hmm. in, in wherever. Um, do you have a personal connection to the military, or is this something that came up for you uh, through your acting career? I'm just being terribly moved by, by anyone who decides to serve in whatever capacity, whatever right. the uniform. Somebody who says, I, right. I am here in service of, is, is so moving. It's also my generation's war, the desert wars. Yes. Uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, th these are our peers. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and those that are returning them, their stories need telling. Uh, so in terms of drama, the, 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 these, are, these are topical, meaningful subjects that, that uh, I'm drawn to for, for various reasons. Uh, this particular story uh, of someone who's re-entered and is trying to find healing yeah. w w felt like new ground, and, or more like part of a series, I suppose, of asking questions. Well, of course, there was an, um, I think that's a very good point that your generation has had this specific experience with the desert wars. You know, my older brother's generation was Vietnam. Yeah. And that was a whole, uh, that was a larger cadre, but of course we had a whole bunch of movies about the difficulty of Vietnam veterans to, that was like a social trope for a long time. Totally. But there's a lot of men and women your age, I guess, who, have, who were in Iraq, were in Afghanistan, and are back now trying to deal with the differences, right? That's right. And uh, so that's, that's um, but it wasn't something you consciously set out, set out to do to kind of, kind of explore this? It just it came up for you? It's just, it, it, it's, um, again, I, coming back to the freelance. Yeah. It, it's, it's what crossed my desk and, and um, moved me at the time. And, 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 uh, and it was with a filmmaker that, that felt like time well spent to, to go right. ask these questions together. Uh, ha have circled war. Uh, yeah, I suppose it, it was the messenger. Uh, Lone survivor is yes. uh, um, Rampart again with Orrin Moverman. Yes, small role, but a, a homeless vet. Uh, That's right. In a more traditional right. sense. Yeah. But addiction and, and mental illness was uh, being unpacked in in a, in a more straightforward way, I suppose, than this. And this is. Um, um, uh, he has been out of the service, it, it seems, for a bit. Yeah, yeah. It suggested, again, no backstory we were talking right. about. This is not an expositional film. It's, it's a, uh, a textured one. Yeah, experiential texture, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, that's, 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 that's fascinating, and I, I feel like the, the way that you, you are, um, the way you've, you've, you've laid this out, you just, said, you, said, you just said that time well spent with the director is an important question is that one of the ways that you make decisions about what what role to take on is this going to be kind of a nurturing experience for me something that that I can it's good for my life basically you hope you, you, you hope to go to work with with people you like it doesn't always work that way no matter what your profession yeah, is. yeah this is true <laughs> you're like oh yeah it's that guy all right yes <laughs> again he got promoted <laughs> <laughs> it's the same in film. It's just um, the shelf life is shorter, so it's very intense uh, blocks of time. So a shoot will be independent film six to seven weeks. Right. Prep, if you're lucky, about the same. Uh, I, I love prep. I love the collaborative process. Yeah. The making of the film is 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 more like. Um, the labor of it, or paying the, That's rec or the yeah. receipt of a great meal. The, yeah. Getting the conversation with somebody that knows far more about the thing that you want to learn, and they're willing to share that with me, it's the, it's the greatest thing in the world. Uh, so you want to be able to ask those questions with people that you, you have a rhythm with, a shorthand with, a, a curiosity, an appetite, and an attitude towards asking questions. That's all, it's a short amount of time, but it's, it's, it's rigorous. Right, it's I not can't. a hard job. <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> there are no bullets, real bullets <laughs> lying. I mean, hopefully. Yeah. Um, we hope not, yeah. You hope not. Uh, but if you're going to spend that time asking questions and feeling things, you, you want them to be with people you like. It may, may be a little bit too much of a, uh, a cliched question, but you do seem to, to enjoy or relish going at characters where there's a lot of weight on that person. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned... Uh, mental illness, substance abuse, as issues that come up with some of these characters, and and 
with quite a few of the characters that you've played, there seemed to be some degree of that, you know, in Hell or High Water, um, mm. maybe. Uh, one, of, one of the, you, you don't play the major character, one of my favorite films, um, a film that not too many people know about in your filmography, Ink Them Body Saints, huh. which are, I love that movie. But, right on. Um, but is, is, do, you, do you feel like that's something like the character who is going through a lot of stuff, who's carrying something heavy, is that, is that a, 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 an important challenge for you, something you like to do? It's drama. Yeah. Drama's conflict. Yeah. Uh, uh, they just don't cast me for the pretty girl next door, so I, I, I got to take what they're giving me. Dog got <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I haven't thought too heartily about it. I, I know I'd rather laugh um, when I'm watching a movie, um, but I haven't been able to do a lot of that. Uh, uh, I'm looking. <laughs> Every time I see Judd Apatow, I'm like, dude, you gotta <laughs> you, you, let me in, man, let me in. So far, it's not working. Not me. yet. No, mm, that's too bad. Yeah. That's too bad. This this is a uh, uh, Ben Foster. Uh, Remarkable uh, talent, the star of Leave No Trace, Deborah Granick's new film, which is in theaters June 29th. I assume I can look this up. I assume this is probably one of those platform releases where it's starting out in New York and LA, and then the people in Minnesota will get to see it down the line, that yeah. kind of thing. No. It's coming to Minnesota. Coming to Minnesota. Good. Yeah. That's good news. Uh, ben, what's next for you? Uh, there's a film called uh, Galveston, which should be out later this year, uh, directed by Melanie Laurent with Elle Fanning. Oh, yeah. And, uh, that sounds tremendous already. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it's, Elle's great, man. I've been really lucky. Yeah, there's some. Uh, yeah, this is the age of the badass woman.